Welcome to Banfield. It has been whispered, it has been rumored, but now they're just flat out saying it. Recession. It's the dirty word describing a country's economy when it has negative growth for at least two quarters. That's eight months. We know it when we hear it, and today we heard it. One of the world's biggest banks, Deutsche Bank, confidently announced there is one on the way. With rising interest rates, they say a U.S. recession will likely begin late next year as the country grapples with some of the fastest growing inflation in decades. Deutsche is predicting a mild recession, but come on, let's be frank, there is nothing good that comes of even a mild recession. It's a period where the economy struggles and companies make fewer sales and people lose their jobs and investments go south. And that really stinks if you need those investments now or in the next five to 10 years. Remember two years ago, we had a bad recession when the pandemic took hold. And then remember back in 2008, that was a whopper when the housing market collapsed. Recession is a word that sends shivers down the spines of financial forecasters and hardworking Americans, which is why it is not usually tossed around lightly. And if you're thinking, Ashley, I got plenty of time, why worry? Snap out of it. Even the economics team at Goldman Sachs is projecting a, quote, significant chance the economy will fall into a recession sometime in the next 12 months, they say. Ask any American and they've already seen the writing on the wall. A recent survey found 81% of us think that the U.S. will experience a recession this year. But there are things that you can do right now to gear up, bear down, and protect your families, your homes, and most importantly, your investments. I'm joined by Matt Sapala. He's America's money smart guy, a veteran of the United States Marine Corps. His new mission is teaching people how to take charge of their personal finances and realize financial independence. And Catherine Tuggles with me as well. She is the chief content officer of HerMoney.com and also the co-author of the book, How to Money. So these are the perfect two people to help me navigate what is coming down the pike. Okay, so uh, Catherine, let me begin with you. You know, the natural course in things is correction or recession. It's not like we haven't been through it if you've been around the block once or twice. But what does that mean for people who actually might need their money sooner and don't have the time to build their money back up if a recession takes a hammer to it? Right. I'm, I'm hoping that there's a little bit of muscle memory left from 2008 when so many of us who are still in the workforce went through this, perhaps for the first time. But, you know, we really learned that having cash on hand is the way to go, particularly if you're nearing retirement, because the worst thing, the last thing that you want to have to do is to draw down on your investments when the markets are down, thereby losing money. Um, you know, this is, really couldn't be coming at a worse time because a lot of people who had to deplete their emergency funds in 2020 just to survive, just to pay the bills, to keep a roof over their head, they haven't had time to build those emergency funds back up yet. So when I see that, that number in the headline that we could be headed for a recession in 2023, it is concerning given where many of Americans are right now with their financial picture. I can sort of see people in their kitchen, you know, seeing that the, the news come across their TV sets or the radios and then sort of stopping dead in their tracks thinking, oh, there's so many things I need to do and I don't even know where to start. But Matt, it's important for everybody watching right now to know they are not lambs to the slaughter unless they choose to be, right? 100%. I, uh, you know, there's a conversation about playing financial defense and there's a conversation about playing financial offense. And I remember in 08, 09, I remember buying some real estate in 05, 06 and everything was just inflated. And next thing you know, home prices were less than what people owed on their mortgage. I clearly remember that and i remember people tightening up i remember people panicking and i remember people saying hey, you know what am i going to do my 401k turned into a 201k but i think if we can learn from those bad mistakes you know we learn more from our bad mistakes with money than from our good experiences and so what were some of those things some of those things were making sure that they properly diversified their retirement savings that they weren't unnecessarily exposed to unnecessary risk they had to find out which part of the money was going to be there safe no matter what money had to be there uh, in addition to that, people's home equity, if you got equity in your house right now, a lot of people's 
uh, values of the properties it might be an opportunity for you to have a strategic cash and maybe reposition, refinance some of that equity out, protect some of it because you don't want your equity in trapped inside that property. Next, you know, same thing happened in 08, 09. A lot of people lost it if they didn't cash out, refinance it or secure it with some sure. form of line or crate or something like that. That's when we first started hearing, uh, oh, I'm upside down on my mortgage. That was really painful for a lot of Americans, particularly in Nevada and in Florida. I mean, these were places that just got hammered. Okay, so Catherine, let's go over a bit of a checklist for our viewers, because there literally is a checklist we're going to give you tonight for things that you should start doing. Start with the top one, an emergency savings fund. Talk to me about that. Yeah, we know most Americans are woefully undersaved for an emergency. Most of us don't even have $1,000 saved, but I cannot stress enough the importance of just putting whatever you can aside every month, even if that's just $5, towards a rainy day. It's the classic rainy day fund. If you lose your job, you've got to make sure those fixed expenses that you have every month, food, housing, medical care, are paid for. Yeah, it's hard to believe it, but 56% of Americans cannot handle an emergency expense of $1,000 or more, even if it's medical or if it's a rate increase on a, on a credit card. Like, that's a tight spot to be in. So that's a tough thing to do to start an emergency savings fund. But as Catherine just said, start no matter how much. Okay, so Matt, take the next one. Eliminate debt. Sounds like a no-brainer, but talk to me about it. Two forms of debt, good debt and bad debt. And debt that is bad is something you got to eliminate right away because that's the type of debt that's most likely the highest in terms of interest rates and things that you cannot deduct on your typical tax run for your employee. But the flip side is if you're a small business owner, you have a business, do good debt, business interest, business expenses. Those are some of the things that you can deduct from your taxes. So if you're going to go through your, your finances, find out which one of your liabilities can be paid off sooner and faster. Therefore, you don't have to leverage or add more problems to the existing liabilities that you have right now in the balance sheet. Okay, Catherine, the next one is look at your lifestyle. That sounds obvious, but people might be saying, oh, come on, end of next year, I don't need to stop going to the movies just yet, do I? Ashley, I'm so glad you brought this one up because during the pandemic, we all changed our lifestyle so much more than we realized, right? We started maybe getting an extra streaming service. Maybe we have Netflix and maybe we have Apple TV and maybe we have all of them because we want to catch our favorite shows. You're going to have to cut back. That's a very, very smart move. And we also know that during the pandemic, people were eating out less. But maybe this meant you started springing for the really fancy olive oil at the grocery store, right? It's time to cut back. It's time to cut back. It's time to go back to the way our habits were pre-pandemic. Especially if you were a good saver, you know what to do. Yeah, that's a really good point. Okay, Matt, time for an audit of what we do for a living. Uh, we've listed it as a career assessment, but what does that really mean? You know, we're in the middle of the great reset, the great resignation the reset, if anything, the pandemic has caused us to rethink our priorities, how we make money, where we want to spend our time. There's some notable companies right now during the middle of time, uh, tough times. And I'm thinking about companies like Microsoft, DoorDash, Uber, Airbnb, PHP, Agency, so many, Hewlett Packard. There's uh, some companies that started their business in the middle of tough times during the recession. Today, multi, multi-billion dollar companies. So career assessment, business opportunity perhaps, maybe this is an opportunity for you to bet on yourself. Okay, Catherine, the last one on the checklist, and it's certainly not the most exhaustive checklist, it's kind of just the, the emergency checklist, but this one is move around your investments, start reallocating. Give me a little bit more detail on what we should be looking at. I mean, should I be uh, taking cash out, putting it under the mattress, or buying gold, or real estate, or what does it mean to move mm -hmm. your investments around? Yeah, so all this hinges on your age and your timeline to retirement. So if you don't have a financial advisor and you've been thinking about it, this is a really good time to go get one to figure out you know, where you are and if you're on track. If you are headed towards retirement, again, like I said, having that cash on hand that can float you with your fixed expenses is a really good idea. Um, the bond market is a place that you might want to be if you just don't have the risk tolerance right now to ride out the market. Um, and just you know, reshifting things. As we said, COVID changed everything. So maybe you invested in uh, stocks that you knew might perform well. Maybe you put all your money into Zoom. Well, you know what? It's time to rethink that. It's time to, to take a look at where everything stands and where they're headed in the future um, and just really reassess what your priorities are. 
But I think what you just said is key. Talk to someone, uh, someone who knows more about you, your risk tolerance, your age, your needs, because it's, it's different for all of us, right? Even on this screen, the three of us will have a different asset allocation in our 401k uh, because of so many factors, kids, planned kids, all the rest. Okay, so Matt, that all the stuff we just listed out, that's a really good prep list for a recession, but it's also just really good financial hygiene at, at all times. So don't throw out the list, everybody, if, if it, you know, the recession doesn't come. Keep it and practice that good hygiene. But I want to ask you this, Matt. Um, sometimes, uh, if you watch the financial channels, they get very excited and they're, uh, it kind of scares us viewers. So is this a sky is falling moment or is this really true? Because it seems like there are differing messages out there, although I do think Deutsche Bank is a pretty strong voice. I think the prudent way to go about your finances is always to be optimistic, but also make sure you watch your back. You have some form of defense. You're always looking for things that just in case, I mean, you have to find out people, as, 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 as um, uh, uh, Catherine had mentioned, you got to find out ways to, to have the right conversation with people that have been there, done that, surround yourself with wise counselors. Uh, you, you are understanding that many people are talking in the media, people talking in news channels that have their opinion too as well. And take that in, learn, assess, find out what works for you, educate yourself. This is financial literacy month, this is April. This is a perfect time for you to go about asking people about what they learned throughout the recession, what they can add to themselves here, because this is also not only a time of protecting yourself, but I believe that no matter what president is going on in the, in the White House, no matter what economic times we are, there's always opportunity to be somebody to, to champion ahead. This is the moment where a lot of people, the seeds of greatness, the seeds of future multimillionaires, and decamillionaires and billionaires are being planted at this very moment. Yeah, well, listen, no matter what, it's uh, it's worthy to get a little help early on and to get a jump on things because I think we were all kind of stunned in 2020. We were stunned in 2008. A lot of us lost a ton of money in housing. We, we just thought our houses were going to be our investment, the safest investment for life. And then shazam, it, it wasn't. So great stuff. And thank you, both of you, Matt Sapala and Catherine Tuggle. I think I'm going to have you back a whole bunch as we sort of creep towards this financial ugliness. Thanks, guys. Thank you for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.